Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. We are riding in the truck. Um, we're going on a trip over to my dad's house real fast. We got Max in the car. This is probably one of the first times he's been in the car. Um, but um, this year we got WrestleMania coming up right around the corner. We got the Hall of Fame uh, coming up this year. Um, it's going to be taking place after SmackDown. I'm not sure really when it's going to air. If it's going to air live as it's happening or if they're going to uh, put some production into it, doing some edits, uh, and then release it. Um, well, they can't do it Saturday night because Saturday's freaking WrestleMania. So I don't know when the, Wrestle uh, the WrestleMania Hall of Fame is, is, is going to be taking place this year. I just know that the actual presentation is going to be taken uh, after SmackDown. Um, you know, pretty good class um, this year uh, with, with some names in it, past and present. Um, they didn't really sort of change the game up um, that much. But honestly, I really thought this was going to be the year. Um, I didn't think he needed to be the, the main eventer. I didn't think he needed to be um, like the, the, the main guy that was driving people in to buy tickets. But I, I wasn't the biggest fan of his, it wasn't like ride or die um, with this guy. I do remember buying SummerSlam uh, when he went up against Yokozuna um, and re really marking out thinking that this was the guy that was going to beat Yokozuna. And I actually remember myself like being really pumped after he won the match by count out uh, before really figuring it out that the title doesn't change hands on um, a count out. I think honestly that was like I don't really know if that's what a dusty finish is, um, but I always thought the dusty finish was like you thought you saw the guy get the victory, but in the end he doesn't win. He doesn't get the championship. So to me that that was like the first time I ever really saw a dusty finish that affected me um, of uh, Lex Luger getting the win but not winning the title. Uh, of course that prolonged the story uh, to get us into WrestleMania 10 where I think a lot of people thought we were going to see uh, Lex Luger get the win over uh, Bret Hart um, to, to solidify himself being a champion, beating Yokozuna and beating Bret in the same night. I don't really understand why Lex Luger is not a Hall of Famer. Um, I do know um, that Lex was known to be a little bit of a diva um, in his time, uh, I know that he rubbed uh, some people wrong. Um, one, the one thing that came to mind more than anything else is, is, is from his documentary where he basically was being set out to turn from the narcissist uh, into the Lex Express, Mr. USA, Lex Luger. And, um, you know, he was going out on the, on the bus and he didn't like life on the bus. So basically he was having the, the bus driver drive the bus city to city and he was asking the company to basically fly him to the next town and meet the bus for the publicity to make him a bigger star, which doesn't really make any sense <laughs> at all. Um, but um, during the, uh, the dog days of WCW, um, I, I think that when Buff first came in or came back to WCW, I think that he, you know, was a team player. Um, of course, everybody can remember him, you know, being the first guy uh, to really take a piece out of the NWO, uh, beating Hollywood Hulk Hogan on Monday Nitro. Um, I believe that was like the 100th episode of Nitro, so that was like a real big deal. He won the championship on a Monday, and then he ended up dropping the championship at the pay-per-view that weekend. I believe it was on um, Saturday, might have been on Sunday um, at, at uh, Road Wild. It wasn't the first one, so it wasn't Hog Wild. Um, but, you know, Lex, in this last, you know, if you really go back, they were supposed to have that Lex Luger documentary that came out on the WWE Network. That was like roughly, like three or four years ago is around that time period where they were gonna make the uh, um, the, the documentary on Nexus. They were gonna make the uh, documentary on the super fan Vladimir. And then all of a sudden, it, 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 everything just died. There was YouTube videos. There was uh, stuff put out on Twitter and on Facebook that these documentaries are gonna come out. I think the Lex Luger one was actually supposed to debut on the 4th of July. Um, 
It wasn't going to be like a hit piece. You know, Lex was sort of brought in for it. Um, and it just never came out. Um, last year, Lex was a part of the a &E biographies where he actually got his own biography. And you're going to think like those documentaries should sort of be set aside for Hall of Famers. And if he's getting an A&E biography, why is this guy not in the Hall of Fame? And put, you know, plus in the last year, you know, they've been starting to put out the Mattels. Uh, they had like the two in one uh, four horsemen figure that came out a couple uh, like last year. This year we got the SummerSlam Elite um, with him in the attire uh, from SummerSlam 1993. Um, you know, Buff. We, we I just said it a second ago. You know, Buff. Uh, I'm sorry. Did I say Buff? We can get to that later. That's late in his career. Um, but, um, you know, Lex w was brought in. Um, he was a, a former, you know, football player. I think he, uh, if I remember right, he was actually on the Atlanta Falcons. I'm pretty freaking sure. And, um, you know, from that, you know, the, that dream ended and he transitioned into wrestling. He had, like, the million-dollar body. He just kind of had to, like, figure it out. And uh, I think that's how, like, his first few years in the business went. In the NWA, they really pushed him. They got behind him. Uh, but he wasn't really, you know, ready yet. Yeah, everybody can remember the uh, steel cage match between him and Bruiser Brody. Um, where Brody refuses or just doesn't want to go along with the plan and he ends up uh, no selling Lex and Lex just climbs out of the cell out of the, the cage because he doesn't really know what else um, to do <laughs> um, so you know it, it, it sort of took a while and it sort of it's it, it sort of clicked uh, he was uh, uh, one of the um, introduced as a member of the Four Horsemen with uh, Ric Flair. Um, you know, once he broke out of that group and, and he was in the championship picture, he was a guy going up against Ric Flair. Um, I think the guy just had one hell of a career. Um, you know, he was one of the main team WCW guys. Um, if you go back and you figure out when the NWO split and Kevin Nash and uh, um, Kevin Nash and the Macho Man started what was the Red and Black Wolfpack. It still really doesn't make any sense to me why Luger and Sting joined the group. How they fought so hard against the NWO. And those guys are basically like, hey, we're going to start our own group that goes up against the NWO. Why wouldn't they still be team WCW because it gets to a point like the war games um, is that 98 um, the one that DDP wins it's team NWO Hogan team NWO Wolfpack team WCW like why isn't Sting and Luger still a part of that like are they like a little bit bad I don't know. <laughs> it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, you know, in the dying days, um, WCW, they sort of killed off the Lex Luger name. They just started calling him the Total Package. Um, I think that honestly was a way to like keep him fresh, keep him younger. That's, of course, when they put him together um, with Miss Elizabeth, where they would go on to have like their... Um, future romance and of course everybody knows how it ends from there because of the old confidential episode where um, you know they were you know doing drugs at the time they were in bad places in both of their lives and Miss Elizabeth actually died <laughs> um, sometimes I always kind of think maybe that's one reason um, why Luger's not in the Hall of Fame because of the fact how they publicly went after him and they don't want to dig that dirt back up on him, but I mean that was touched upon during the biographies of Lex Luger. It was sort of done in a different way of the confidential one that it didn't really make him look like he was just straight guilty and he was the one making Miss Elizabeth do the drugs. But um, I don't know. It, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I think that he's a, a big enough name that he should be a guy that's already in there. Um, 
maybe when Vince McMahon was running the Hall of Fame, maybe he didn't want to have somebody go into the Hall of Fame in a wheelchair. Uh, I know a lot of times they they've always really thought about like how many people that have passed away go in during a during during a year. They don't want to look a certain way, um, thinking that you know his wrestling career put him in that wheelchair. Um, but I don't. I don't expect Lex Luger to die anytime. I just don't want Lex Luger to be one of those guys that isn't going to the Hall of Fame until he passes away. And, um, you know, not be able to be, you know, celebrated uh, for his career and how much he really did. I'll tell you the truth, man. Like, once he turned to the total package, there really wasn't a ton um, of, of good times for Lex Luger. And, of course, like, once... Um, WCW closed. He was one of those guys that Vince McMahon promised uh, would never work uh, in WWE. And of course, that's when he started doing like the independence. Um, and that's when he, got, he, of course, did the t-shirts too tight, Super Super Brawl, Super Saturday. Can you even pay me? I don't know. <laughs> Which honestly deserves him to be in the WWE Hall of Fame more than anything else for having one of the first wrestling viral videos of all time that people were able to laugh at that promo so much that weren't even really wrestling fans that have that thing passed around um the way that it was um but uh, of course you know when he was doing the independence and he was doing those like early fan conventions they had the big one uh here in san francisco um at the cow palace that went horribly wrong I'm telling you, if you can go on a deep dive, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but if you look up like, I think it was around 2005, if you look up like the 2005 fan convention at the Cow Palace in San Francisco, you will see chaos. How it didn't turn to riots, how it didn't, you know, um, turn to just fans being just pissed off. There was wrestlers there that weren't getting paid. There was fans not getting what they paid for. Um, shows being canceled um, all around. Um, you know, just bad, bad, bad. <laughs> um, I know that I've done a deep dive and I listened to like the um, F4Ws and the um, observers uh, from that week and them talking about the convention. And plus, if you go online, you're able to find actual like wrestlers talking about how bad the situation um, really was. I know that there was a, a fight. Um, it was actually they, they had brought in like uh like not ufc fighters but like cage fighters that had names at the time i guess you can say um and there was a fight between uh one of the cage fighters and uh like dog the bounty hunter's son i think his name was leland um that uh, was at the convention as well it is just nuts but of course at that convention uh, is when Lex Luger, I believe, had his uh, stroke and he was paralyzed. And he actually was in the uh, doctors uh, here in um, San Francisco for a long, long time. Uh, and then, of course, he's able to, you know, uh, find Christ and he really changed his life and the, and the way he lived. Uh, and he seems like he's a much nicer guy. I believe I met him in Dallas at WrestleCon at WrestleMania 32. And um, really cool dude, um, you know, gave me all the time in the world that I needed. And um, I'm glad he's out there, you know, still doing the conventions. You always see him wearing like football gear. He doesn't have one team. It's not the team that like in that city or anything like that, where he's trying to get like more people to come to him. I've seen this guy at different conventions with Bill's gear. I've seen him with, Bengals gear. I've seen him uh, in um, Chiefs gear. I, I just think that he just loves the sport. And I think that he just, you know, goes with whatever's going on. He just loves to watch ball. So um, that's my video. I'm hoping that if this is WrestleMania 40. I really hope WrestleMania 41 comes around that we see Luger up on that stage going in. Because I think that honestly, the man deserves it.